The Little Teardrop A story by Tony Timstra The storm had passed as all storms do. Molly stood outside in the gentle rain, looking up at the clouds. These were the last few raindrops falling. The sound of the rumbling thunder came from far away. It rolled beneath the clouds as if it was searching for her. To tell her it was sorry, to tell her it was over. Molly held a small wet caterpillar in her hand. She found it in a puddle of water. It was not a particularly large puddle of water, but to the caterpillar, it was like being in the middle of a vast ocean. Puddles are not a nice place for caterpillars to be because, as you probably already know, caterpillars are not good swimmers. Their legs are much too short, and Mother Nature did not give them any skill or technique to become good swimmers. Molly quickly carried the caterpillar home, cuddling it in both hands, being careful not to squeeze it while trying to keep it warm with her breath. Rain makes puddles, Molly whispered to the caterpillar. You can't blame the rain. Molly gently cleaned and dried the furry little creature. It was a beautiful black and yellow caterpillar with four dots running down the middle of its back. And there were several long white hairs sticking out at both ends making the caterpillar look very elegant and much longer than it actually was. She placed the caterpillar in a size 5 shoe box filling it with green grass several small sticks, some leaves, and a thick piece of flannel cloth for the caterpillar to curl up on. These were all the things that caterpillars liked. And every day Molly would bring the shoebox to the garden filling it with fresh leaves and green grass. And so the caterpillar was happy and grew quickly. But one day, when she looked inside the little shoebox house, she saw that the caterpillar had died. It was so sad to see, and she started to cry. A tear rolled down her cheek and fell from her face. But the wind caught the teardrop and carried it across the yard, blowing it over the fence, beyond a large oak tree and into a grassy field where it got caught in a spider's web. The web twitched, and a little brown spider with long legs scurried out from its den. Oh, said the spider, looking closely at the drop. I thought you were my dinner, but you are only a drop, and a small tiny drop at that. I am sorry, said the teardrop. I did not mean to fool you. Apology accepted nodded the spider. Now would you kindly leave? Your sparkle shows off my web, and I must try to keep it invisible so that I may catch my dinner. Well, said the teardrop, trying to wiggle herself free. It seems I cannot get loose. Your web is very strong and very sticky. I see that as a compliment, said the spider, thank you. I take pride in using the best quality of silk. Let me see, perhaps I can shake you loose. Perhaps you can, encourage the teardrop. Your legs are long, and that should prove useful for the task. And you sound very optimistic. It is in a spider's nature to be optimistic, or to be patient. But I am not sure which one. Maybe both, replied the teardrop. But the spider did not hear the teardrop and continued to ramble. A favorable view of events, with courage and calm without complaint, expecting a positive outcome.
I can do this. Teardrop watched the spider scurry to the middle of his silk spun home. The spider began jumping up and down, vigorously shaking the web with great effort and for quite some time. But it could not shake the teardrop loose, the webbing was too strong, the silk too sticky, and the spider too small. I cannot shake you loose, said the spider taking several deep breaths. And now my legs are tired. It was a noble effort, said the teardrop. The spider came down and sat beside the teardrop. I did try my best, said the spider, and I can see the night is coming, so maybe in the morning, we will have better luck. Are you going to leave me here alone? Asked the teardrop. I have never been through the night before. There was a hint of worry in the teardrop's voice, and the spider sensed a small tremble travel through his web. There is nothing to be afraid of, said the spider. I will stay with you until the morning and will tell you everything I know about the darkness so that you will not be afraid of the night. And it would be nice to have some company, that I wasn't going to eat later. That would certainly be nice, said the teardrop. So the sun did set, and the moon soon rose. Spider and teardrop stayed together, talking about the night about the stars, and about faraway moons. And the spider taught the teardrop everything there was to know about a spider's web. If you cannot remember everything I told you, said the spider, remember this, that you cannot escape from a trap unless you know you are in one, because a spider's web is not the only trap. I will try, declared the teardrop. I will try to remember it all. And for a time they rested, silently watching the shooting stars. Spider soon fell asleep, but Teardrop was no longer afraid of the night. And as the darkness passed quietly by, the moon kissed the far horizon and disappeared below the thin line of earth and air. It was morning, and the sun now began to rise, peeking over her horizon as if looking for the moon. They would often chase each other, the sun and the moon. But the sun always knew where the moon was and never told moon her secret. And the moon had her own secret. Sometimes she would let the sun catch her, and they would eclipse the day and for a few moments, they would be together. But the moon was fickle, always wanting change, and slowly she would move away so that the chase could start again. It was a game the sun enjoyed, and it made the days and weeks pass by. Soon Spider woke to the light of the sun, and a web sagging heavy with morning dew. Good morning, Mr. Spider. Good morning, little drop, said the spider. I must have fallen asleep. I had a funny dream, but I cannot remember it. How do you know you had a funny dream if you cannot remember it? asked the teardrop. I know that seems odd, said the spider. But the more I became awake, the more of the dream I forgot. Well, your web is covered with dew, and that is not a dream. What will you do now? Oh, not to worry, said the spider. The sun will melt away these dewdrops from my web. Perhaps the sun will help you too. Then I will ask the sun to help me, said the teardrop. Oh, you never have to ask the sun, laughed the spider. The sun is good. 
She will always give you everything you need. We only have to wait for her to wake up and come a little closer. Both Spider and Teardrop watch the sun rise. And just as Spider said, the dewdrop slowly disappeared from his web. But the sun's warmth did nothing to the teardrop. The sun did nothing for me, said the teardrop. Interesting, said the spider scratching his head with one leg and his chin with another. The sun must have had a reason, that which is inevitable and predetermined, causing an irreversible course of events, such that. What are you mumbling about now? asked the teardrop. Destiny, proclaimed the spider, destiny, or fate. I am not sure which one. What is the difference? The difference, said the spider, is you. I do not understand, replied the teardrop. You don't always have to understand to believe, said the spider, but I do have an idea. Let us ask the wind to blow you free. Spider called out to the wind, asking her kindly. Wind, wind, will you blow this teardrop off my web? The air began to flow and swirl. Oh, yes, laughed the wind. Of course, I will. That is what I am, and that is what I do. So the wind did blow, and it blew hard for them. The web grew tighter and tighter until it could stretch no more. Even Spider was surprised at how secure his silk-webbed home had become. But the wind was stubborn and continued to blow, and when all were expecting to see the web tear to pieces, Teardrop blew free, released from her tender captivity, and carried off high into the air. Goodbye, Spider, called out the teardrop. Thank you for telling me about the night. Goodbye, my friend, said the spider as he watched her sail away. And for the two of them, it truly was a goodbye. Thank you, wind, said the teardrop. I like the spider and his web very much, but I could not stay. Well then, little drop, where shall I take you, howled the wind. I am not sure, said the teardrop, as she paused and wondered about destiny. May I ask where are you going? I am the wind. There are many places to go when you are the wind. I can take you anywhere. But let me lift you higher. Perhaps from up there, you will see where you need to go. And so the wind carried the teardrop beyond the green fields, far above the valleys, and high across the mountain tops. Four days they traveled and searched together, talking about the strange world below. And the wind taught teardrop as much as he could. If you listen, said the wind, you will learn many things, and if you listen to yourself, you will learn much more. Listen to yourself, asked the teardrop. What do you mean? My little drop, your way is not in the wind. Your way is in the heart. Let me take you to a special place, and then I must leave you. So the wind lifted Teardrop higher and higher. And in the cold crisp air Teardrop turned into a snowflake. I will leave you here with the other snowflakes, said the wind. I have branches to bend and kites to fly. The ocean needs waves, and there are clouds to push. I have much work to do. I like you, Teardrop but I can stay no longer. I understand, said the teardrop. 
And then the wind laughed. No wind can stay and still be wind. Isn't that true, my little one? Very much so, replied the teardrop. Goodbye then, replied the wind. But the wind did not look back at the teardrop when he said it, only moaning deeply for a moment. Teardrop sadly watched him go, and soon the wind was gone. And in the silence of that moment, there came a voice. Hello, said the snowflakes. How did you get here? A wind from far off places brought me here. You are a curious looking thing, said the snowflakes. Well, I am not really a snowflake, and I am not as beautiful as you. With your splendid shapes, I would be pleased to be a real snowflake. We are all beautiful, and we are all different, cheered the snowflakes. Who makes all your wonderful designs? asked the teardrop. That is an odd question, said one of the snowflakes. But I think our shapes just happen. No, 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 said another snowflake as it danced and twirled around the teardrop. There must be a designer. Our beauty has a purpose. Isn't that true? Teardrop tried to answer. I don't know what to tell you. Perhaps you need to search for that answer. But the snowflake was not expecting an answer from the teardrop nor from anyone else for that matter. It was content to twirl and spin, being pleased with itself for asking such a serious question. Do you have a purpose? asked the snowflakes. Sorry. But I do not know that either, replied the teardrop. That's okay, said the snowflakes. We don't expect answers, we only expect questions. You say you only expect questions, replied the teardrop. Why is that? Well, that should be obvious, stated the snowflakes. The more answers you get, the more questions you will need to ask. And the more questions you have, the more answers you will need to find. And well, as you can see, we need not continue. It is obviously the answers that are causing problems. But I thought answers were more important. Oh no, said the snowflakes. It is the questions you cannot answer that will teach you the most. Well, then, said the teardrop, I have a question. Please ask us, replied the snowflakes. My question is a simple one, said teardrop. Where do snowflakes go? The snowflakes swelled together for a moment contemplating the matter. We do not know for certain, the snowflakes declared. But every snowflake will fall in its proper place. Your answers are peculiar, the teardrop confessed. Then come and travel with us, and we will teach you everything we know. And so for the next few days, teardrop and the snowflakes drifted across the sky asking each other questions. And at times it was very confusing. They answered many questions with questions, and so there would be few answers found in the deep blue sky, and yet much was learned and pondered. We have learned much from each other, said the snowflakes. But we think you need to go higher to find the way of your heart. So the teardrop said farewell to her curious friends. And the snowflakes fluttered goodbye helping her to drift higher. Colder and colder it became, 
and soon Teardrop changed her shape and found herself amongst the ice crystals. Hello, smiled the Teardrop. Who are you? We are the ice crystals. It is nice to meet you. Thank you, said the Teardrop. It is nice to meet you too. I see your shapes are clear and yet you show such splendid colors. Where do your colors come from? From the fire of the sun, replied the ice crystals. Oh, said the teardrop. So you are not afraid of the fire? Oh no, said the ice crystals, we are safe here. It is the light of the fire, and not the fire itself, that we embrace. Teardrop saw delight in the ice crystals, and asked to stay with them, and they welcomed her. And each night they would form a ring around the moon. It was a rainbow of light that filled the night sky with delightful colors, like frozen fireworks for all to see. And as the ice crystals played, having no concern or bother, they bumped into each other making a pleasant tinkling sound. It was the music of dancing ice, like a melody to a song that had no words. And as the days passed, they drifted across the ocean, watching the whale below, and a small sailboat being blown by the wind. I like it here, said the teardrop, but as you know, I am not really an ice crystal, and I must go and find my way. We understand, said the ice crystals. We will be sad to see you leave. Me too, said the teardrop. I will always look for your pretty colors. So Teardrop said goodbye and took one. Last look at the ice crystals as they played. With the light of the fire. Slowly she began. To drift back down, warming herself along. The way. Soon Teardrop roamed over the desert. It was a hot, dry place where she heard a strange and deep voice. Are you water? asked the voice. You there, I am talking to you. Are you water? Who meet? asked the teardrop, looking around to see if someone else was nearby. Yes, you there, replied the voice. I am the spirit of the desert. Are you water? Are there more of you coming? Sorry, I am not water, said the teardrop. And as for your second question, I do not know if more is coming. Oh, but you look so soft and wet. You look like water. And I have had nothing to drink for months. Won't you please come down and be with me? I would very much like to help you, said the teardrop. But what can one tiny drop do for a whole desert? Oh, you mustn't think like that, said the desert. You are like a little grain of sand. Each grain of sand is the desert. To be tiny does not mean to be insignificant. You sound like a wise desert. I would be pleased to help you. I am tired, and I like your warmth. I suppose Wind would not mind if I stayed here. Wind? Do you know, Wind? asked the desert. Yes, she is my friend, and she set me free from a spider's web and carried me far away. Well, the Wind is my friend too said the desert. You have shown me kindness, little drop. I will not need your help. A storm will be coming, wind told me. 
He sends me a storm every year. I may be old and have seen many changes, and if that makes one wise, then so be it. I am the desert, and I will always be the desert that I know is true. And you were willing to help satisfy my desire, but I believe you are being saved for something better. Thank you, desert, said the teardrop. Now please, tell me more about the wind. What mischief has she done lately? Teardrop told the desert everything she knew about the wind's mischief. The loud crashing waves she made on rocky shores and the dust she blew along the streets. They laughed at how wind made people chase their hats and blew their papers across the ground. She told him how the wind could be moody and how she played tricks with her voice, with a howl or a kind whisper, or a thunderous roar if she was annoyed. They both understood it was in the wind's nature to have such a temperament. It was not always easy to be the wind. And do you know what else the wind told me before she left? Asked the teardrop. No, said the desert. Please tell me what she said. Teardrop moved closer to the desert and whispered. The way is in the heart. That is what she told me. Come, said the desert, I think the wind is much wiser than I. What do you think that means? asked the teardrop. And for a time the desert became quiet and teardrop saw joy in the desert sand. But he never answered her, and so the question stayed a question. Now the desert was large and desolate, vast like the ocean. A sea of sandy waves that moved slowly, it was an immeasurable pace and cloaked with invisible change. And as the teardrop drifted over the desert, they had many more days and nights to talk about wise things. And when teardrop finally reached the end of the desert, there was a sadness in knowing they would part ways. So where will you go now? asked the desert. I am not sure, said Teardrop. I have seen and done many things. I have crossed over valleys, crossed over mountains, and crossed over a big blue, green ocean. I have even crossed over a fence, and now you the desert. Where else is there to go? Have you been to the clouds? asked the desert. I have always welcomed the clouds, as silly as they may be. You should go and find them so that your journey may soon be over. They are a lot like you in many ways. Goodbye then, said the teardrop. I will look for the clouds. Goodbye, replied the desert. I will give you the warmth of my body so that you may rise above the sands and beyond these desert plants in hopes of finding your way. Thank you, said the teardrop. I will remember you. And I will remember you too, said the desert. Slowly teardrop rose. And as the days passed, she found her way to the clouds. Hello there, said the clouds. Glad you could join us. The more raindrops, the better. Well, I am not really a raindrop, replied the teardrop. That's okay, said the clouds. You can come and float with us. What are you doing up here? asked the teardrop. We change shapes. We appear and then disappear, and then slowly show up somewhere else. Our shadows cover the world below, and we play hide-and-seek with the moon and with the sun. And even though the stars may be far away, we can hide them too. 
Sidrop stayed with the clouds, and they didn't seem at all that silly to her. She told them about the wise wind and the deep dry voice of the desert. She told them about the strength of a spider's web, of which they knew nothing. And she told them about the sound that ice crystal make, and the fun there is in asking lots of questions. And the clouds told Tidrop all about shapes and shadows. They warned her about thunder and the lightning. But they also told her about rainbows and hope. And so for a time, Teardrop and the clouds meandered through the sky, telling each other stories and adventures. And sometimes during the day, they would be quiet, content to float and cast shadows. Look, said the clouds, we are drifting towards a small town. Let's rain on them and make puddles. Tidrop looked at the small town, and it seemed strangely familiar. Do you want to storm with us? asked the clouds. That is kind of you to ask, said the teardrop. But as you know, I am not really a raindrop. Very well, said the clouds. Good luck with your journey. Thank you, said the teardrop. And good luck to you too. The clouds laughed, and thunder was heard. And as teardrop left the clouds, a rainbow reflected in her shine. Slowly she fell towards the small town, falling closer and closer towards a little yard with a garden. And there, sitting beside that garden, was a little girl holding a size 5 shoebox. It was Molly, she had kept the shoebox house all this time, being hopeful and brave. She opened the lid to look at her caterpillar one more time, and at that very moment, the teardrop fell on the caterpillar. Like a long-awaited caress, the teardrop found her purpose. And from that tender touch, the caterpillar moved. It had not died but was safely hidden inside a cocoon, waiting for this moment, waiting to transform. Molly saw the caterpillar change into a butterfly. It clung tightly onto her finger, and with every breath, it opened its wings and became stronger and stronger. The butterfly flew out of the box, delighted by the life of flight. It fluttered around Molly as she laughed and danced. The clouds watched from above. And the sun was there, and the moon was there, and the wind was there. The snowflakes, the ice crystals, and the spirit of the desert, they were all there. And when Spider saw the butterfly, he knew it was her friend. Molly closed the lid on her showbox house. She was happy to see the butterfly fly away, happy to see the butterfly be a butterfly. There will always be storms, and there will always be puddles. And even now, in some other place far away, in another small town, there is a storm. And as all storms do, that storm will also pass. The End